Back down to Campbelltown! Hello and welcome to another Whiskey Review with me, the Whiskey Novice. Thank you for joining me. As per usual, it's great to be back for the start of another new series. This one I am calling Back Down to Campbelltown, or if my Scottish friends aren't insulted, Back Down to Campbelltown. Uh, yes, I do like, anybody who knows me will know that I have a bit of a penchant for, uh, for the region that is Campbelltown. So what we're going to do with this series is uh, we're going to bookend it with a couple of Glen Scotch, a couple of non-age statement Glen Scotches. There'll be a couple from the Glen Guide Distillery in there, and of course there'll probably be something from Springbank. Got to have something from the Springbank Distillery if you're going to be in Campbelltown. This is review number ninety-three, and as I said, part one of. Also, what's this? Sh it's advertising. We're trying to get the subscription numbers up. It was in the contract. And you couldn't have, you couldn't have done something a little more subtle. You know? We'll see what we can do. Yeah, you know, sort it out next week. Sorry about that. It's tough these days. Uh, yes. So, Glen Scotia double cask. Last I knew, Glen Scotia were owned by the Loch Lomond Group, but at the rate things change in the whiskey world, I could be wrong by the time this goes out, because I did read somewhere that it was it was moving around again. This is uh, bottled at 46% unchill filtered, I think. Did I read somewhere that it's unchill filtered? I'm sure I read it somewhere in the bottle. Yes! non-tail filtered probably a, a little color added to it but uh you know it is an honest statement yes it is uh this is uh, is matured in american oak and finished in pedro jimenez sherry casks 46 percent all very good yeah yeah i yeah from the moment, from the very first moment, I I know this double cask, whenever it may have been, because this is I've had this one around a while. Gingerbread, gingerbread is the outstanding nose to me on this, the outstanding note. Not a bad thing. I do like gingerbread, but the real. Now this is going to be. Kind of difficult for me to describe because it's that real hard gingerbread that they almost make the gingerbread houses out of the stuff that has to be hard enough to sort of hold up it's it but it's a real real strong strong note and i like it and it's it that i get first on this it's it that, that still sort of hangs around with everything else oak nutmeg oak definitely yes nutmeg there's also a meatiness. Yeah. Like a, a beef stock cube. Not not beef stock, but like the cube the, the dry stock before it's soaked. There's a slight hoppiness, like a real eel. There there is a hint of that sherry that dried fruit that sherry dried fruit from your your finish your pedro jimenez finish a bit but only a hint it, it plays along with everything else yeah and once that gingerbread starts to settle out it starts to become creamy sweet and creamy Caramel, yeah. There's a fruitiness, apricot. This is what I liked about this, and what I continue to like about this is, it's a bit exceptional, it's a bit, it stands out from the crowd. 
It doesn't just act like every other whiskey out there and in a good way, very much so in a good way. So end of the palette. Thick, sweet, delivery. And even, I said earlier, but they're having a, a, a meeting about it. I don't often use it, umami. It is there. That savoury note is there. Dirty, it's oily. Peppery, gingery, hot. Yeah. And then the sherry influence starts to come through. And it's great. It works really well with that gingery, peppery heat. And it's just, oh yeah, definitely. Oaky okay, spiciness, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I forgot you were there. Mm. Chocolate, bit of orange, vanilla. Mm. Dark chocolate, dark chocolate and raspberry together. Slightly sweetened cereal. Yeah, yeah. I do like this. It's this is the thirty to forty price range. Yes, it's a non-age statement. It's thirty to forty pounds. It's non-chill filtered. It's forty-six percent. Pretty much ticks a lot of those boxes. And I just think it's a bloody good whiskey. Hmm. And gets better. It's finished, sort of medium to long. Ginger, still memories of that dark chocolate and raspberry, which I really like. And, and I've had this bottle from here to here. That gingerbread thing never left it, never. So when you go back in, the first note I get on the nose every time is the gingerbread. But the chocolate and raspberry came along there, I think. The just it, it just has got better. I know this debate has has come around. I've forgotten how I described it. I've forgotten the notes. The debate has come around about air. It comes around, keeps coming around. Neck pour over the shoulder, etc. With the air getting into it, and I think this ball is getting better and better. The gingerbread thing settles out of it tends to do that in your glass anyway, but it just has got better as it has went along. I've added a little water. And it didn't really help the nose much. It goes a little rubbery. And a little bit artificial. It takes the, the it takes that gingerbread thing away from it and unfortunately it doesn't help. Palette, yeah, it, it's made the palette a bit flat. That was, it's not, there's still life there. There's still pep, there's still enough heat going on, but it's just made it a little one dimensional yet again. It, it, it's weirdly, rather than opening flavors up for me, has, has narrowed it in. So no, I wouldn't recommend water for it. But personally, anyway, I just think it's good without it. Yeah, you may have got the impression that I like this. I do like this. This bottle was actually gifted to me by a family member at a, at a time when uh, the things are just, uh, because of pandemics, etc., things weren't looking up. And, and uh, he gifted me this bottle and said, just to lift your spirits. And I thought it was a lovely, lovely gift. And... Uh, 
It, so it, it, it's sort of the whiskey itself then holds a fond memory for me. Plus him and I, this this uh, family member and I both had this in Edinburgh together at a something, can't even remember what it was. But it just, it, it does hold a fond memory for me. But it's not just that, it's a good whiskey. And I would recommend it. So staying with this before we move on, I just want to say something else. Glen Scotia, I think, are they've been around a while they've been around a long time now i could be wrong and don't shoot me for saying it don't knock me back for saying it but i'm just just go through this out there i think glen scotia and deservedly so sort of rode a bit of a wave of the mitchell family distilleries in that there are only three distilleries remember in campbelltown and everybody was doing flips and twists to get their hands on the next Springbank release, the next Kilcarran release. So when there's two distilleries owned by one family are getting constantly chased, well then I suppose people started to look and go, well, what else is in Campbelltown? Well, there's only Glen Scotia. I wonder what their whiskey's like. And to me, I could be wrong, but to me, Glen Scotia's stock has just shot up, but it's not just down to, by any means, not just down to it's Mitchell family's success. It's down to good quality whiskey, and I think last year was a was a good year in that their festival release, the, the fourteen year old Tawny Port, was outstanding and absolutely fantastic whiskey. So it was, there was a lot of timing involved in it with releases. Not, I don't think, planned, just maybe accidental. If I could be completely wrong, maybe Glen Scotia were, were just on the up anyway. They were on the rise, but I don't think it has done them any harm. The fact that Springbank and Glen Gyle are, are being chased all the time for their next releases. Glen Scotia deserve the credit they get because they make good whiskey. There you go. I'll move on from that. Yes, if Glen Scotia Double Cask is your thing, if you've had this and you liked it, I'm not bringing up a bottle this week because it's a bottle that I don't have, but it's one that I have had, and it is this, Annandale. Annandale Man of Swords, uh, a, a Lowlands distillery there, Annandale, relatively new distillery. But I had this a couple of times, this uh, Man of Swords, and both times, all I could think was that reminds me of Glen Scotia Double Cast. So, but, but, it's quite expensive. It comes in a very, very fancy box, as you can see. And it, I'm sort of outdoing this a bit here. In that, I'm going to say, I would just buy Glen Scotia's double cask. Annandale's Man of Swords is a lovely whiskey. It, it looks beautiful. It's presented well. But for the price, I would prefer Glen Scotia Double Cask. But if you liked Glen Scotia Double Cask and you wanted to know what else was out there, which of course is what this segment is about, isn't it? Uh, I would recommend Annandale's Man of Swords. So there you go. So yeah, there you have it. Glen Scotia Double Cask, absolutely stunning whiskey, in my opinion, for the price it comes in at. For it to be an on age statement, it's just different. It just tastes different. Stands out from the crowd. And not only does this stand out from the crowd, but Glen Scotia stands out from the crowd. And we will get back to that at the end of the series as well, I hope. So there you have it. I'm going to move on, leave it at that. I think I've said enough. And say thank you very, very much for joining me. It's great to have you here for this new series. I would like to thank my patrons very much. If you wish to join that group, the details are below. Any 
any pledge that comes in from patronage goes back into the channel in some shape or form. It all goes back into the Whiskey Novice as a channel. And I thank my patrons very, very much for that. There you have it. Until the next time, my friends, here's to your good health. Cheers. Hey, thanks for watching my video. Please click and subscribe to be notified of further content.